Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session this evening. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our amazing panelists at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are muted, so we are unable to hear or see you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, the session will be recorded. Um, so if you miss anything, you will have access to the recording within about a week or so. Um, and you'll also have the contact information for all of our panelists. With that said, I'm gonna turn it over to our first presenter, which is Emmanuel College. Great, so we can get started. I'm gonna share my screen here. Awesome. So hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm Olivia Ferraro. I'm an assistant director of admissions at Emmanuel College. This is just my contact information, but you guys will get sent after the fair. Here is just a little bit of an overview before we get started. So, you know, a lot of schools say they're close to Boston and they're in the greater Boston area. We are right in the city, right down the street from Fenway Park. And then the Longwood Medical Center is right behind us. So we're in a pretty cool neighborhood. We're a small Catholic liberal arts college with 1,900 undergrads, five different academic schools, 70 different major minor programs split up into those different schools. So you guys can see up on the screen, we have business management, education, humanities and social sciences, nursing, which is our newest school, and science and health. We have 16 Division three athletic teams, 10 consecutive years of students who have received Fulbright scholarships. Another really unique thing about us is that we have four years of housing available on campus. That's guaranteed for all of our students. Uh, the vast majority of our students do live on campus, so over 85% of our total student population, and then over 90% of freshmen do live on campus, which like I said, is pretty unique considering we are right in the heart of the city. So a lot of different things going on. Our students also do about 50,000 hours of community service a year. That's not a requirement. It's just something our students are interested in. Um, it's something that they like to get involved in. So we have a few different experiential learning opportunities for our students. Um, internships is definitely the biggest one. So everyone at Emanuel will complete at least one internship. It is required um, to graduate, uh, but it's definitely not meant to be intimidating, you know, or anything like that. You'll get assigned a career advisor, um, and every freshman will take a class that goes over cover letters and resumes and all that good stuff, so you guys feel really confident um, going out and looking for those internships. Employment rate a year after graduation is 96%, and grad school placement a year after graduation is 92%. So our students are finding something they're passionate about at Emanuel and are able to intern about, you know, or doing research in that field, and then are going on either to grad school um, or employment in that field, which is great. As a liberal arts school, you're going to take courses from all different fields, you know, so you're going to take an English, a history, a math, a science course. Um, we want our students, like I said, to have a strong base, a strong background in all different subjects. You know, your writing skills are important no matter what you go on um, and end up working in. You know, things like that are important. Critical thinking skills are obviously important. So we definitely want you guys to have a strong base in all of those. Internships are also, you know, obviously they're great to put on your resume um, to have that experience, but it's also good for you guys to kind of feel out, you know, do you want to work at a big company, a small company, you know, what's going to be the best fit for you, basically. Like I said, we have 16 Division three sports, which are all listed up on the screen here. Um, even mix and men's and women's teams, obviously, um, we are Division three in the GNAC conference. Um, we also have a lot of intramural sports, which is fun. So you have, you know, tennis, softball, field hockey, things like that. Um, we are in a consortium of the colleges of the Fenway. So it's five schools in the Fenway neighborhood. Um, we do a lot with them. We do intramural sports with them. Um, you can cross register classes between the schools really easily. Um, it's a manual, obviously, Simmons, Wentworth Institute of Technology, Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, and then Mass Arts. Five schools all in the Fenway neighborhood. Like I said, we do a lot with them. Um, it's a great relationship. We're all about a mile from each other, within a mile of each other. Um, like Simmons is our neighbor right 
you know, down the block. <laughs> um, but we do a lot with them. It just kind of expands out your circle even more, um, which is great. Like I said, we have a lot going on on campus. We have over 100 different student clubs and activities. And if there's something, you know, on this list that isn't, you know, maybe something you did in high school, or you're looking for something, you can always start your own club as well. We have a ton of study abroad opportunities. There's over 500 different programs in 65 countries. Basically, if it's safe <laughs> to send you somewhere, the study abroad office will do their best to make it happen. So there's a lot going on. Like I said, too, community service is a huge part of what we do on campus. Over 80% of students participate in some community service. Um, you know, again, not a requirement. It's just something our students are interested in. I think it kind of speaks a lot about, you know, what type of community we are. It's a tight-knit community. People want to help out each other and help out our, you know, greater Boston community as well. Just some requirements to apply, pretty standard. We're on the Common App, there's no application fee, it's free for everyone. Um, we'll get your application essay, we'll get your transcript. Two letters of rec are required, one from a guidance counselor and then one from an academic teacher, so your English history, math, science teacher. We are test optional. We've been test optional for about five or six years, so very comfortable reading applications without test scores. The only a different thing is nursing. Nursing is direct entry. Um, last year, we weren't test optional for nursing with everything going on. Um, for 2022, so for fall 2022, we don't have 100% um, decision about that, but we'll definitely have it soon. And, you know, we'll definitely keep you guys in the loop about, about what the decision is for test scores for nursing for this coming fall. And then just some deadlines you guys can see up here. Again, if anyone is interested in nursing, I definitely recommend you apply as early as possible. It was very competitive last year and you know, pretty much every year we've had it. Um, so definitely you know, be thinking about that um, when you're interested, you know, if you are interested in nursing, if that's something you wanna do. Um, and if you're interested in nursing too, definitely recommend an interview just as another chance to get to know you just because that is the only direct entry program and it's a little bit more competitive. Um, but yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Here's just some social media handles. And then again, my email address is down at the bottom here. Um, but thank you guys for joining us tonight. And like I said, if you have any questions at all about Emmanuel, feel free to drop um, any questions in the Q&A. Thank you, Emmanuel College. Up next, we have Union College. Hi, everyone. Um, so what I want to do is I will also be sharing my screen. So Union College um, is uh, was founded in 1795, and we're located in Schenectady, New York. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, we are a small city, about 67,000 people, um, about 20 minutes from the state capital of Albany. So we're in the capital district. I would say from any place in Pennsylvania, you're between two and probably six hour drive from us, uh, but certainly Amtrak and um, airports are pretty convenient also um, to Schenectady. We are a small liberal arts college that also offers degrees in engineering. So we're among a small group of about 15 colleges that have that mixture. Uh, we have 2,200 undergraduate students. About 50% of our students will be majoring in something in a STEM field, a math, science, or engineering. The engineering programs are ABED accredited. Um, so those would include electrical, mechanical, computer, and biomedical. And then we also have about half of our students who are majoring in the social sciences and humanities. So you have a lot of things to explore, a lot of different ways that you can combine your your, um, different academic interests. It's important to note that about 80% of our students are going to be pursuing more than one academic field. So if you're the type of student who wants to major in a science, but also has an interest in a language, you can do that. If you're a student who is interested in engineering, but would also like to study economics, you can do that. If you're a student who's very involved with the theater, but also would like to uh, major in 
political science um, or environmental science, certainly you can do those types of things. We have a number of interdisciplinary programs like environmental science and policy, um, Latin American studies, Asian studies, um, women and gender studies, so all sorts of things for you to explore. And when you apply to union, you're applying to the college, you're not applying into a specific academic program. So you have some time once you get to union to make those decisions. We're on a trimester calendar, so we have three 10-week terms and so that just gives students the flexibility that they need in order to combine their different academic interests. Because we're a small school, we pride ourselves on the connections that you're going to be making on campus. Um, we have um, a studio, student to faculty ratio of 10 to 1. So our introductory classes average about 21 students and upper level classes average 14 students. So as you can imagine, you need to be engaged in the classroom environment. Uh, the professors are going to call upon you to ask what you're interested, what you got out of the reading the night before, what your perspective is and what is being discussed in the class. And these relationships that you're building with the professors really come into play in the opportunities for students to be mentored by the faculty, to have them serve as your advisor, but also maybe to help them with your research that you might be doing, or to really get to know you and, and really take an interest in who you are, not just as a student in their class, but also your other interests. So our faculty are always going to the athletic events of the people that they have in the class, or they're going to club organizations um, that uh, events that the students are putting on, or they're just having students stop by their offices to grab a cup of coffee and sit down in their chair just to talk about life. And so these relationships are certainly a pillar of what you'll find at Union. We also are offering a number of immersive experiences for our students. Um, there are three that I really want to highlight. Number one um, are the research opportunities that the students are involved with. About 80% of our students will do undergraduate research um, during their four years. And very often this starts by per, uh, students working with professors on the research that the professors are doing. So our professors are teaching all of the classes, but they're also staying current in their field. And they'll invite students to get involved. And that might be working in a biochemistry lab. It may be working on a project in the physics lab, but it also may be working with a professor in the, uh, the music department, um, writing a piece for the orchestra to perform, or someone within the history department who's studying a particular age or era and um, working with the professor or editing a professor's um, chapter of a book that they're writing in the classics department. So this research takes place in every academic area. About 85% of our students will do at least one internship during their four years. Uh, many times this, these will take place in the local area, but a lot of our students are taking advantage of internships during the summer. And so they were traveling really around the country and sometimes around the globe um, to take advantage of these internships. And speaking of global experiences, about 60% of our students do study abroad at some point during their four years. Uh, we have full-term programs. We also have mini-term programs, which are three-week programs. We offer programs in about 25 different countries. And many of these programs are union-based programs. So again, another great way to get to really connect with um, the faculty because you'll be traveling with the faculty member. We are an inclusive environment. We have about 130 clubs and organizations. Uh, one of the highlight and special programs at Union are our seven Minerva houses. The Minerva houses are something that each student belongs to one of the houses, um, and it really provides the students the opportunities to learn a lot, plan a lot of events and programs, um, learn to lead because each of the houses is run by a house council. 92% of our students stay in university housing or college housing all four years, so you can get a sense that it is a very strong sense of community. We are a split division school, so we have two Division I sports, men's and women's ice hockey, um, and 24 Division three sports, as well as intramural and club sports. 
we do have about 97% of our students who are um, know what they are doing within six months of graduation. And so that includes um, internship, um, internships, jobs, uh, graduate programs, Fulbright scholarships, um, programs like that. And then I do just want to mention we meet 100% of the demonstrated financial need of students who are admitted to union. We have a number of different um, application um, programs. We have been a test optional school for about 13 years and we accept both the common and the coalition app. Um, and you can reach out to me with my um, email address and I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Union College. Up next, we have Holy Family University. Hi, everyone. My name is Tim O'Driscoll. I'm one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions at Holy Family University. And I'm sure like a lot of us, we're all, you know, stuck at home. So if there are any disruptions from my office mates, I do apologize. Um, they're usually well behaved, but sometimes can be a little noisy. A little bit about Holy Family University. We're uh, located in the northeast section of Philadelphia, and um, we're pretty well known for our, our nursing program, education, and uh, school of business programs. We have, do have four, four different schools of study, School of Arts and Sciences, School of Business Administration, School of Education, and School of Nursing and Allied Health Profession. We do offer a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. And I like to break that down in a personal story from my time when I was a student at Holy Family and what it means to have that 12 to one student to faculty ratio. One of my classmates was an honor student all through high school and really struggled with the transition to college uh, life. At the end of class one day, just stopped and asked her professor and said, hey, I'm having a hard time. Can you help me out? Professor sat down with her for an hour that week and went through the course material, everything about it, how to study, how to read a college textbook. Um, fast forward a few years, we're on senior year on a leadership retreat, and she shared that story and said, I wouldn't be here today if that teacher didn't have the time to, to sit down with me. Fast forward a year after that, she had graduated, passed her boards, became a nurse, and was awarded nurse of the year at her hospital. And she always talks about that moment, how her teacher was able to, to stop, know who she was, and have that moment to talk with her. So we're really proud of our small feel environment that we have at Holy Family University and the fact that, you know, students do get a personalized education while you're here. Uh, and a big piece of that, in addition, is the one-on-one -on -one faculty advising. Every student at Holy Family has an advisor from their specific school of study. Um, so if you're in the business school, you're going to have uh, a, an advisor that's a faculty member in the school of business. And lastly, through your time at Holy Family, we want you to gain real world experiences. And a big part of that is through our internship program, uh, student teaching if you're in the School of Education or your clinicals if you're in the School of Nursing and Allied Health. So real world experience is something we want all of our students to get and experience. So um, it's a pretty important piece of your education at Holy Family. Student life, we like to talk about student life at Holy Family as an opportunity to um, build your resume with registered student organizations. And one of the ways that we want to see students do that is by getting involved in clubs, getting involved in activities, um, and building those leadership skills and the things you're going to talk about on your resume through real experience through four years at Holy Family University. Uh, we are a Division II athletic school, so uh, we do have students that come to Holy Family uh, to play sports, and you know, there's always the opportunity for athletic scholarship for those. And then we offer club sports as well. We have club rugby, club baseball, cheerleading, and dance. And then just to hit on campus safety, we do have a whole um, division on, on campus for uh, uh, your health and welfare, both physical, mental, and spiritual through the uh, – um, health services department with our registered nurse practitioner on campus, our counseling services on campus, and our spiritual counseling through um, uh, the campus ministry uh, department. So we like to make sure we're taking care of all those different areas for you. The freshman application is very uh, easy. Uh, we do require a completed application, whether that's through the Common App or our our own application, which can be found at our website, holyfamily.edu. Um, it is pretty short. It is, it's you know easy to get through in one sitting. 
and um, you know there, we don't really see many issues with that. Um, there is no application fee. Um, the only thing that we require with your application is an official transcript. Test scores are optional, as well as a letter of recommendation and personal statement or essay. Uh, what I want to touch on here is that if you do send test scores, Holy Family University has a do no harm policy, which means when you apply to Holy Family, there's no need to check whether you're going to send scores or not send scores. If you send test scores, we'll review your application twice, one with them and one without. Whichever opportunity gives you the best profile is the one we'll move forward with. So, um, you know, there's no negative effect to your application if you send in scores and you have a better profile without them um, just by looking through your transcripts and your recommendation and, and other supporting materials. So, uh, we, especially with everything going on this year, uh, you know, we wanted to make the application process as easy and fair to students as possible. And this is one of the ways that we identified that we could, we could do that. 100% of our students do receive financial assistance. As you can see, I have the figures listed here for tuition and fees. Um, and then uh, uh, and room and board, and that is for a full year, not a semester. Um, and then, you know, if we're looking into next year, the FAFSA will be, uh, you can file that as of October 1st. And we were found to be one of the lowest net cost private universities in the Philadelphia area. So that's something we're very proud of. And that's one of the things the Sisters uh, of Holy Family of Nazareth who sponsor the university are very important. It's very important to them that we make sure we remain affordable to students. And every student who's accepted qualifies for a merit scholarship and they range from 12 to $21,000. Uh, just real quickly to touch on outcomes, uh, Holy Family University has been recognized by Money Magazine as a value all-star, all and the Chronicle of Higher Education has named us a top 10 school for best salary outcomes, and we have over 500 employer partners through our Career Development Center, and no matter what's next, we want to be a part of that for you. And here's my contact information, um, and as well as the contact information for the admissions office. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. Thank you, Holy Family University. Up next, we have Capital Tech University. Sorry about that. Let me start over. Hold on. I did not realize my sound was not on. Sorry, give me one second. I'm having a bit of an issue here. One moment. All right, here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. My name is Malia Pauls. I'm an admissions recruiter at Capital Technology University. And I am going to go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about Capital. So Capital Technology University is the only private university in the state of Maryland dedicated to engineering, cybersecurity, computer sciences, and tech management. We are located in Laurel, Maryland, which is right in between Washington, DC and Baltimore. Um, we're about 45 minutes from Washington, D.C., about 45 minutes from Baltimore, so we're smack dab in the middle. Um, and each of these pins here um, between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, in the Baltimore area, represents a, um, a company, a government agency, um, or even a larger corporation um, that specializes in STEM. So each of these pins also represents um, a lot of um, the companies and agencies that our students end up working for. All right, these are our programs that we offer. Um, our popular programs are cybersecurity, computer science, um, and information technology. Um, our computer science and cybersecurity programs are both ABET accredited. And as a whole, 
um, Capital Technology University um, is accredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. All right, here are our admissions requirements. If you are going to be specializing in engineering, um, you will have a preferred minimum GPA requirement of a 3.0, um, fourth year in math and a third year in science. Non-engineering majors preferred minimum weighted GPA of 2.5, three years of math, two years of science, and two years of a social science. And for the fall of 2021, uh, we have waived our SAT and ACT requirements. Cost of attendance. Um, tuition usually starts at about $26,000 per year. Um, with on-campus housing, that adds on about six to $8,000 a year, um, and in total, it ranges on average about $34,000 a year. And our tuition guarantee is that all full-time students who have their student account current are promised that their tuition will not increase more than 1% per year for, for all four years that you are um, attending the school. Now, moving into our scholarships, this is where that number would drop. Um, we do offer a merit scholarship for first-time freshmen and you can receive up to $12,000 per year. Um, again, um, the SAT and ACT requirements have been waived for fall 2021. Um, we also have merit scholarships for transfer students and you can receive up to $10,000 per year. We offer a robotic scholarship for juniors and senior students who have um, participated on a competing robotics team in high school. We also have a cyber competitor scholarship um, and you will be able to win $5,000 per year. Um, and you would have to attend a, either attend a capital cyber event um, or be a part of a, uh, be a, part of a um, competing cyber team during your junior or senior year. Um, fall also under the $5,000 mark, we have the ACE Mentor Program Scholarship, the TARC Scholarship, Future King STEM Scholarship, and the First Responder Scholarship, which is given to students um, who um, are dependents of first responders who have lost their lives in the line of, in the line of duty. Um, we also offer a Capital Scholars Program scholarship, which is the opportunity for students to receive a full tuition scholarship um, through a competition. We actually just had our um, CSP event for the year, um, and we are in the process of um, awarding those students as we speak. All right, fast facts. Our student teacher ratio is 16 to one. That means um, that we are a small school. However, um, that's a good thing because um, you would be able to have, actually have the opportunity to have a much better relationship, not only with your classmates, but also your professors. All right. 60% of students re represent the minority population. 80% of students receive some sort of financial aid. 82% of students have had a job offer within 90 days of commencement. We'll talk about that again in a second. And 52, 54, excuse me, percent of students represent traditionally underserved populations. These are some of our internship opportunities. Um, we work with a lot of local agencies and a lot of government entities, especially because we're not too far from Baltimore and DC. Um, so for example, the Department of Defense, also NASA has an office out here, um, Lockheed Martin, um, AT&T, Verizon, Lidos. Um, and those are just a few that, um, few of the internship opportunities that our students would receive. Now, um, we have something called the capital commitment. And our capital commitment basically states that we guarantee that every student that comes into capital will receive a job within 90 days of graduation in your field of study at a competitive salary. And if for whatever reason, um, you are not able to receive a job within 90 days, um, then we will be able to offer you 36 additional credits while you are looking for a job. This is just some additional information. Um, we are offering um, camp campus visits at the moment, virtual information sessions and webinars. Our next virtual info session is scheduled for March 27th. So if you would like to participate in that, um, let me know. You can send an email to admissions at captechu.edu. Um, if I am not your admissions counselor, um, then you will be able to have that information as well. 
And you can reach me directly. Um, here is my contact information. And again, my name is Malia Pauls from Capital Technology University. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Marietta College. Hello, my name is Lane Archer. I am the admission counselor for the state of Pennsylvania. Um, and I'm just going to um, go through some fast facts with you guys to start off. Um, Marietta College is located in Marietta, Ohio. It's a pretty small town and small campus too. Um, we were chartered in 1835, about 1,200 undergraduate students. The student to faculty ratio is nine to one and the average class size is about 13. So regardless of your major, you'll get to know your classmates and your professors very well. Um, they're gonna know you by your first name. You're not just a number here. So it's kind of nice to have that um, additional support from um, everybody here on campus. We're located about two hours from Pittsburgh, um, two hours from Columbus, and about an hour and a half from Charleston, West Virginia. Um, so right along the Ohio River in Southeast Ohio. And we're currently represented by um, students from 34 different states and 10 different countries. Oops. Okay, and this is an overview picture of our campus. Oh, sorry about that. <clears throat> so you can see just how small it is. Everything is within two and a half city blocks. Um, it takes less than 10 minutes to walk from one side of campus to the other. I actually attended Marietta myself and I loved that aspect, um, especially when it's really cold or on a rainy day, you don't have to spend a ton of time, um, you know, outside walking from building to building. Right. And this lists up several of our new majors and minors, and then also our most popular majors, petroleum engineering being the most popular, um, followed by education. We've had 100% placement rate with our education graduates the last six years, so it's a really, really strong program. Um, leadership is a nationally recognized program that students can add on to anything else that they may be studying. Health science is our most popular pre-med major, and then we actually have nine business majors within the entire business department, um, all of which are very popular. Our application can be free on our website, but we're also found on the Common App too. So we are in um, rolling admission. We don't have an application deadline for those of you that might be seniors, you can still apply for this coming fall. Um, Otherwise, the application will open up to seniors starting August 1st, going, going into their senior year. And we'll need, of course, the application itself, an essay, transcript, ACT and SAT test scores are optional this year. And then we do ask for a letter of recommendation either from your guidance counselor um, or a teacher, really anybody that knows you pretty well academically. And all of that is listed with more detail um, on our website that's listed up there. We do have 22 Division Three athletic teams. Um, you can see them all listed up there. In addition to those, we do also have intramural sports. So um, even if you don't want to be a full-time collegiate athlete, you can still be involved through our intramural sports. We also have over 60 clubs and student organizations. So it seems like everybody can find their niche here at Marietta College, regardless of your interest. Um, four fraternities, three sororities, um, student government, every academic major has a club and a, a long list of a very wide variety of clubs. And this is another overview picture of our campus. You can see just how close we are to the Ohio River there. And that is our um, men's lacrosse and football field. Um, and yeah, just a couple blocks away from the riverfront and the downtown area that's filled with many local shops and restaurants. It's a very walkable campus and community, so you don't necessarily need to have a car here as a student, um, but students can have their cars here all four years. 
um, and the parking permit is not an additional cost. And this slide just shows several um, places where our current graduates are either employed or where they are at in graduate school. So it's neat to see some of um, the different places our students have ended up. I'm sure most people have heard of at least a couple of those listed up there. Um, so this just goes to show that you don't have to go to a really big, well-known um, institution to have these really awesome opportunities after graduation and to get recognized by these big companies. Um, and over 95% of our graduates are employed um, or in graduate school within six months of graduation. Um, and there in the bottom left is my contact information. So um, if anybody um, needs to, has any questions, you can reach out to me. And we, we do also have campus visits going on right now. So if you'd like to schedule a visit, you can do that through me um, or by visiting the website that is listed up there, marietta.edu slash visit. Um, so I hope to hear from you all soon and see you on campus. Thank you, Marietta College. Up next, we have Virginia Tech. So good evening, everybody. I'm gonna share my screen. So my name is Rich Davis, and I'm excited to talk to you for just a couple minutes about Virginia Tech. Uh, we are located in Blacksburg, Virginia, down in Southwest Virginia, in the New River Valley, which is up in those Blue Ridge Mountains. Blacksburg is a good sized town with lots of great amenities very uh, fond of their Hokies and it's a fanta fantastic place to live. You can get a little view of the campus there. You can see the Blue Ridge Mountains around the campus uh, and it's a beautiful traditional campus. So our motto is ut prosum, that's Latin for that I may serve. Uh, our motto is very important to us. It's a big part of our tradition, a big part of our history uh, and it's who we are as an institution and it's who we're looking for in our students. So we're looking for that idea of service. Uh, we've got a few examples here. We've got a gentleman working on COVID research at the top We've got last year's homecoming queen, who was our first Latina homecoming queen, uh, and she ran on a platform of service, as did the entire court. Uh, and then I'm at the bottom, sorry, of Rich, um, we're unable to to see your screen. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me try that again. Let's see. Let me try it one more time. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries, take your time. There we go. You see it now? We can, Great. we can. Okay, sorry about that. So at the bottom of the screen is, is uh, one of our cadets. So Virginia Tech is one of six senior military colleges, two of which have a core of cadets within the larger civilian university, also a big part of our tradition and history. So at Virginia Tech, we say that major matters. So when you apply to tech, you're gonna apply for a particular degree program uh, within a particular college. So I'll give you just a quick flavor of those colleges. Uh, first is our agriculture and life sciences. We have programs in animal science, horticulture, but also human nutrition, fitness and exercise and agribusiness. Uh, within architecture, architecture is our most popular degree, very competitive because they have a very small class size. And we're ranked number four in the country for architecture programs. Uh, engineering is what we're most well known for, another very popular program, uh, civil, computer, electrical, mechanical, and biomedical, uh, just to name a few. And then in, on the liberal arts side, we have lots of foreign languages, literature, history, national security, sociology, and human development. Uh, college of Natural Resources and the Environment is our smallest college, but it's ranked number, the number one CNRE college in the country, three years running. If you're interested in the environment, anything to do with forestry, fish conservation, geography, meteorology, uh, this is for you, as well as packaging systems and design and sustainable biomaterials. Our Pamplin College of Business has programs in accounting and marketing, management and finance, as well as real estate, hospitality, tourism, and business information technology. And then our final college uh, at the undergraduate level is science. Uh, we have degree programs in chemistry, biology, and psychology are very popular, economics, mathematics, neuroscience, and nanotechnology, just to cover a few. If you're not sure exactly what you want to study, we have a university studies option that allows you to apply without picking a college or a major, but we do recommend picking the college as each of the colleges have an undecided option. And then finally, we have two schools associated with tech, both a medical school and a vet school, if you're interested in that path, they're great schools. 
So we do a holistic review for the application process, looking at you academically and personally. Uh, the way we do that is we're going to have you fill out the Common App or Coalition. You're going to do four short essay questions called our OOT Prosum questions, and you're going to upload your self-reported academic record, and we're going to evaluate that uh, to get a feeling for you as a person and as a student. These are our costs for in-state and out-of-state. You can see out-of-state is 32.8 with room and board comes in at about 42,000 per year. So I'm going to finish up with just a few reasons why Virginia Tech. Uh, we do have an 83% graduation rate, which is almost double the national average. Uh, our undergraduates are very successful in having a job waiting for them within six months of graduation, or they've already been accepted to that next higher level, level of education. Our starting salary is about 62,000 per year. And the last bullet I think is the most important. We have a 93% retention rate from freshman to sophomore year. So those freshmen have made that transition from high school to college. They found a major that they enjoy. They found friends for life with the 900 different clubs and organizations on campus that uh, they found a home at Virginia Tech. And that's what we're hoping for for you. So thank you very much for your time and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Virginia Tech. So with that said, that concludes the presentation portion of our college fair this evening, but I would encourage all of our amazing attendees, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A section. With that said, I do wanna encourage all of our amazing panelists to return um, and I will pose a question to, to you all. Um, so we'll start with Emanuel College. The question, um, please share a fun fact or an interesting fact about your institution. So I guess a fun fact, is that we are right down the street from the iconic Fenway Park and students can get $9 Red Sox tickets. So that's pretty fun. Nice. And so we'll just move on to Union College um, and each college can respond in the order in which they present it. Okay, as a Boston Red Sox fan, you have convinced me to enroll in Manual College for a $9 ticket. But um, I would say a union, um, I think we were founded in 1795. So we are the oldest um, college in the state of New York. Um, and because of that, we have a lot of firsts. We are known as the um, father or the mother of, of fraternities. We have the first um, radio station of any college in the country. Uh, we were the first school to introduce modern languages into our curriculum and the first liberal arts college to offer ABET accredited engineering. So uh, lots of firsts at Union. Well, fun fact um, about Capital Technology University. Um, we were actually founded in 1927. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Um, and even though we are a really small school in the middle of nowhere in Laurel, Maryland, um, our campus is also actually not established until the 80s. So um, as an institution, we've been around for almost 100 years. Um, but um, as a campus, we've been around since the 80s. So, yeah. Uh, so Pope John Paul II actually visited our campus uh, when he came here for the Eucharist to Congress in Philadelphia in 1970 something. He wasn't the Pope yet, but um, the Sisters of the Holy Family of Nazareth that run our, uh, that facilitate our uh, ministry here at Holy Family University, uh, they're from Poland. The Pope was from Poland. So when he was here, he came to see the Polish nuns. So there's like a couch somewhere on campus that he took a nap on at some point. So fun fact. All right, a fun fact about Marietta. Um, we were the first city in the Northwest Territory. So a lot of history here, a lot of different um, museums and such. So if you're into history, Marietta is definitely worth the visit. At yeah, Virginia Tech, we, uh, we have a pretty good football team. Uh, and when we uh, start the game, we always play inner Sandman and we get the students to start jumping. Uh, and we have been measured on the Richter scale four times. Only six college events have ever measured on the Richter scale, and four of them are Virginia Tech football games. So that's a neat fact about us. Wonderful. Well, 
I want to thank all of our amazing panelists um, for sharing insight about your institution. With that said, that does conclude our college fair for this evening, but I do have a few closing announcements. So the first, as you exit out of our Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions, but please respond to the survey. It is useful for us as we aim to improve the college fairs in the future. Second, I want to encourage you all again to sign up for additional sessions. Um, we have numerous colleges joining us for this college fair, so feel free to visit that registration site and sign up. And then finally, um, this recording will be available in about a week or so. So if you miss anything, um, if you want to hear things once more or to just get the contact information of the panelists who presented today, feel free to visit strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. With that said, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you so much. Bye.